There weren't enough white people in the new Star Wars. I thought this opinion would be shared by my fellow critics, but unfortunately, thanks to political correctness, censorship, leftist midichlorians, most mainstream critics seem to only talk about the directing, the editing, the sound, the cinematography, the symbolism, and the acting. None of the important stuff. There are sequences in it in which the landscapes were, as you said, beautiful. They were genuinely breathtaking. They reminded you of that sense of, you know, interplanetary awe. But I wonder what the internet thought of Star Wars, colon, The Force Awakens. Okay, for this video I was going to have a segment where I watch Anita Sarkeesian's review of The Force Awakens with my camera on and react to it in real time. But once I'd started, I found there really wasn't anything to react to. She's gotten really good at hiding the fact she's secretly two Hitlers behind layers of straightforward, understandable criticism, the monster. It must take a lot of skill and talent to be constantly outraged at her opinions for money. I couldn't even muster the anger to photoshop her company logo into fascist propaganda. In the time it takes you to make one of those propaganda posters, you could have done all kinds of far more interesting things. You could have written your own opinion in a way that is actually productive and communicates new ideas and maybe even convinces someone to change their mind and see things your way, you know? Uh, you could have watched a Star Wars film. Or you could do something even better. You could go on eBay and buy Star Wars Pez dispensers. You're gonna see these in a joke in the video later on. It's gonna be great, you see? And that's what being productive is all about. Pez dispenser would you like? I'm doing a Yoda thing, because he's Yoda. There isn't a Pez in this one, so I've fucked up this take. If you want some really badass opinions, you're gonna have to delve deep with me into the world of alt-right-wing crazy people. I would call it the dark side, but they're all white. I wonder what the best way to find incredibly advanced, intelligent opinions about Star Wars is. <gasps> Maybe I should try a pun, like The Farce Awakens? Rocking Mystery and Thunderfoot used that pun? Fucking bingo! Returning truth teller Rocking MRA, sorry, Rocking Mr. E. Mystery? Wait, Mr. E has something to say about the Star Wars films. Let's watch. SJW's ruined Star Wars. <laughs> this is gonna be one fucking badass Star Wars review, let me tell you. <laughs> I've always been very fond of Star Wars. I strongly suspected that something wasn't right, since mainstream critics are generally leftists pushing an agenda. With this video, I'm going to explain how and why everything about The Force Awakens was completely shaped around a leftist social justice warrior agenda. Everything? Oh man, he's going to talk about the direction of the film, or the sound design, or the cinematography, or the editing, or the symbolism. I was already expecting straight white males to take a back seat, but this acceptance was completely inadequate for the myriad of problems with the movie. Star Wars has always been most loved by young white males, but like comics and everything else white males enjoy, they now have to share or give up their culture. <laughs> I have to share my comics with girls! <laughs> Women have a rich history in cinema, with roles like Ripley in Ridley Scott's Aliens, Catwoman in Tim Burton's Batman, or Princess Leia in George Lucas's Star Wars. Sci-fi and fantasy should adhere to rules set by the storyteller. The Force Awakens not only fails to do this, but even sacrifices old rules to pander to SJW ideology. He spends a good long time holding on this picture of Rey. I like to think she's reacting to what he's saying. SJWs reacted to Avengers Age of Ultron, trolling, harassing and bullying Joss Whedon on Twitter. Though Whedon denies he left Twitter for this reason... In this part, she's probably thinking, why is he talking about Joss Whedon being harassed on Twitter by idiots? I thought this video was about Star Wars. Unsubscribed. Luke took three movies to grow as a character, and throughout the original trilogy, Luke was saved and helped at multiple points. Uh, she's not exactly like Luke Skywalker. Uh, no, she's not like the old ones. I guarantee you, right now, at some point he's going to complain that it's a rehash of A New Hope, right? 
The second protagonist of the film, Finn, was also a product of SJW ideology. It's clear his primary role was to fill diversity quotas. Finn was a poor substitute for previous black roles, Mace Windu and Lando Calrissian, while John Boyega is the effeminate male... Wait, so, one black actor was just to fill a quota, but the other two were what, just normal black people? Finn was a character that made no sense. He had no Jedi training, but could fight with a lightsaber. Jedi training? It's a stick! It's a glowing stick! Hayden Christensen can swing that stick like a ballerina! And he's the clumsiest person in the world! Han Solo uses it at one point. Man, it's weird how you forgot about the scene where Han Solo saves Luke's life. You'd think a fan would remember that sort of thing. I've always been very fond of Star Wars. By the way, word of advice, if you're reading from a script, don't wave your head around as you stare at it like that to, for emphasis, because people can then tell that you're just reading from a script, and it kind of defeats the whole purpose of uh, orating to a person. Uh, when I talk to a human being, I look at them. I don't go, let me read from my pre-prepared notes here to you, Dad. I, I would like you to give me back my phone. If we look past Ray and Finn, The Force Awakens was still a tragic affair. The plot was such a rehash of A New Hope that this could <laughs> I fucking called it! <laughs> <laughs> in this video, I've only scratched the surface of just... I agree, it's been like eight and a half minutes, and you've not even really talked about the film. Maybe you should do a redo. Oh, I guess I'm watching it, so he didn't. Why am I giving the screen advice? This is Rocking Mystery, over and out. That's a great font. That'll just scare leftists right off. By the way, when you're making a logo, try not to incorporate three different fonts at once. It's not good on the eyes. You'll notice that the Star Wars logo is clean, crisp, and consistent. It doesn't look like this. When you completely avoid talking about the audio and visual aspects of a medium that's mostly audio and visual, in fact, it's all of it, you might be doing analysis wrong. Apparently it's more of a controversial box-ticking move now to have a black main character than it was 30 years ago. And that's messed up. It's been a couple of years since Rocking Mystery's video about cultural Marxists, so maybe he's gotten a bit better at having a real discussion with people. Uh... I just scrolled down. No. No, he doesn't. You hate straight white males, and you want them gone off the face of the earth. Go and jump off a cliff, do the world a favor, and end your misery rather than projecting it onto society. I'm done with your hateful accusations. Ah! The day will come when no one lis will listen to your cries of wolf. Cries of wolf. Rocking Mystery, do you have your pills this week? Well, Rocking Mystery's half right. I'm done with someone's hateful accusations. Goodbye. Next time on whatever this series is called. Uh, note to self, think of a name. Wait, oh, am I supposed to read this part out loud? Listen up, white man. J.J. Abrams hates you. He relishes the thought of your extinction. Wow, they cast a black woman to play Hermione in a Harry Potter play. My country is full crime thanks to the love of diversity. <laughs> the little white cock ball. <laughs> Da-da-da-da! <laughs>